But we're going to play field position with the lead. Leo high, short spiral. Lehigh's got a chance to down it, and Craig Zern will do so at the one-yard line. A perfect 41-yard punt by senior Jason Leo. That is a huge punt, and he gets a high five from the special team. Here. That was head coach Andy Cohen along the sideline. Jason Leo does. It was a beautiful punt. Kicked it real high in the air. It spiraled and spiked down inside the five-yard line. Going to lay the rest at the one-yard line. And the defense gave up the big play to Adair, but all in all, it's been pretty solid today. Yeah, they've been outstanding, the defense. They had an interception there early in the game. They had big hits by Matt Cohen and company at linebacker. You know, they've been all over the quarterback, too. You know, there's been four or five sacks in this game by the Lehigh defense and many more pressures on the quarterback. You know, they did have a, Lehigh did give up a safety on offense and resulted in a short field for the Leopards who kicked a field goal. So five points in this game have to be put on the offense. Lehigh. Though the clock is running, it may be a little too early to go the conservative route. I mean, you're four and seven. You got nothing to lose. You might as well put the ball in the area. The wind at your back. And now you're going to have to do it on third and seven. So you're thinking it to Fitzgerald. Five catches, 101 yards. Clark with good protection. Throwing for Yansani. Makes the catch inside the five. It'll be first and goal at the two-yard line. What a catch by Seiki Insani, and what a throw by J.B. Clark. And what great protection by the offensive line. J.B. Clark had all day to throw the ball. Again, the two-deep safety coverage. They're out by the hash marks. They run a post pattern up the middle and a circuit catch. Circus catch for the senior Seiko Yinsani. Tips his hat to the crowd. Not the picture of the graphic we have, but he's not really doing that. He's wearing white pants and a white <laughs> shirt. But a huge catch and throw. You know, if you're a Lafayette fan, you're praying for a goal line stand. And if you're Lehigh, you're looking at a situation where you can really put yourself in a good position to win this game if you could punch it in for a score. And Sonny the motion man, offset eye, they give it to Watson, touchdown! Adam Watson, the fullback, with his third rushing touchdown of the season. Well, they've tried that little fullback dive in previous weeks, and it really hasn't worked that well, but, you know, Matt McGowan hadn't been in the lineup, and McGowan sprinted to his right, and they handed the ball up the middle to Watson, the fullback, and he goes into the end zone rather easily, and a huge, huge touchdown for this Lehigh offense. The senior from Teaneck, New Jersey, who did such an admirable job for McGowan, gets the touchdown here to make it an eight-point game. Big extra point, which has been a problem all year. Not this time for Jason Leo, and it's 24-15 Lehigh with 7-11 to play. Third down, call it five. Curly, rolling, Pierce, pressuring, throwing, intercepted by Kennedy at the seven-yard line. John Kennedy looking to go the distance to perhaps seal it. He will take it 93 yards for a Lehigh touchdown. Late flag came in at about the 30-yard line. I think the touchdown will probably stand. But a flag was thrown at the Lafayette 30-yard line. It won't really matter, I think. The second interception for Kennedy. Now, if it's a block behind the play, Marty, they're going to bring it back. Let's see what the call. The officials are huddling, but pressure on the weak side by Al Pierce really caused Hurley to throw a dangerous pass. During the run, we have a personal foul. Four players, obviously, on the play against the original offensive team. The touchdown is good, and we will carry the foul over to the kickoff. Well, it looked like a frustration penalty on one of the Leopards when they, obviously, Lehigh would not block someone in the back, you know, when the touchdown was already scored, a frustration play, but again, the theme of this game has been pressure on the Lafayette quarterbacks. They've been under, the, under fire from the Lehigh defense all game, and that time Al Pierce came from the backside, put a tremendous amount of pressure on Rob Curley, and the interception resulted. Jason Leo for the extra point. And all of a sudden, Lehigh is up 31 to 15. John Kennedy with the interception return for a touchdown, and Lehigh perhaps sealing it. Half roll to the right by Curley. He wants to throw back, and they sees Pierce as soon as he turns around and just throws it up for grabs. And there goes John Kennedy. Remember, he's a kickoff returner, a young defensive back. Takes it back to the house for a score. And I think Lehigh may have just you know, broken that streak of four consecutive losses with that touchdown run. Penalty might come 
Right about here, you might see something. Here's a shove in the back by number 45. Joe, Joe Russo hitting John Warren. Unnecessarily, and the Lehigh fans for the first time in, in many years, it seems, has something to celebrate. Last win over Lafayette five years ago today. Andy Cohen and his team really whooping it up, breaking the four-game losing streak. First win against the Leopards for the graduating class of 2009. And then Andy Cohen gets the, uh, the Gatorade bath, and that looked like water. No. Got to be cold down there, but I'm sure he doesn't feel it today. Not a good day for that. J.B. Clark just backpedaling. He'll wait till it gets to zero, and he'll gladly and take that shot. loss of yards as Lafayette There's sends Clark shot. down, but Lehigh gets a chance to celebrate against the Leopards. Ugliness down the field, but the you know, emotions are high. Well, you see some uh, security concerns down the field. The Leopards are trying to shake hands with the Lehigh player. The fans have stormed the field, and you just hope everyone. Keeps a cool head down there and remembers it's just a football game and head back to their sidelines. J.B. Clark took that shot after he took the knee with the clock at zero, but fortunately able to see the composure kept basically on both sides there. Could have been an ugly situation. Order has been restored. Lehigh wins it 31-15 to finish. The clock oh, it's tough when you're a Lafayette Leopard to watch another team celebrate on your field, but you know Lafayette did it to Lehigh last year and the year two years prior to that, so you just have to suck it up if you're a player, get to the locker room and forget about it. If you're Leopards and if you're Lehigh, it's your day. And it's been a long time coming. You know, for the Lehigh seniors, it's the first time they've ever experienced this. And, you know, as a college athlete, you know, you got to let them celebrate a little bit and enjoy their moment. Well, this is a great rivalry, no question about it. Most played rivalry in college football history. And a lot of tremendous football players on both sides of the field have just played for the last time. Sean Adair, Andy Romans for Lafayette, Tim Diamond, Siku Yansani, Matt McGowan, so many more for Lehigh. All the emotions coming out for the Mountain Hawks as this senior class finally gets to celebrate a win over their arch rival. Yeah, I'm sure somewhere down there celebrating alongside of them as we saw at the halftime interview with Sidel Threat, you know, the quarterback of a year ago, three-year starter, never got a chance to experience this, and I spotted him down on the sideline a couple times during the game celebrating, and you have to feel good for the coaching staffs, too. You have to feel good for Andy Cohen and his staff who, has worked, who have worked so hard, battled through such a, a tough season with four losses by a total of eight points you know I know they're gonna finish five you know five and six but they're gonna come in with this big win here first time Andy Cohen as a head coach has beaten the Leopards. Well, and Marty, we've just received word, something you can certainly relate to in the Lehigh-Lafayette rivalry, a sophomore starting quarterback winning the MVP award, and that honor bestowed this year to Lehigh's J.B. Clark, who goes 12 of 22 for 201 yards, no interceptions, and two touchdowns. Congratulations, Clark, a sophomore MVP, and dare I say, Marty, he now has a chance to become a three-time winner, which has never happened. I hope he does. <laughs> you know, that would be great. If he's a three-time MVP, it means Lehigh wins the next two years in a row. And as, as a former Lehigh player, you know, I'd love to see that. But, you know, hats off to J.B. Clark. But, you know, much like I told you when I got won the MVP as a sophomore and with OK stats, and it was really the defense that won it. And I think today the defense really shined for Lehigh. Well, somewhere in this massive humanity on the field at Fisher Stadium, Mike Gattis is standing by with Andy Cohen. What does this mean to you and the program? Uh, it's just great. I'm so happy for our seniors. It's a great win for the program. Anybody that loves Lehigh football, this is a great day. Go Lehigh! All right, guys, here we are back on top. All right, Mike, good luck down there. <laughs> There's some excitement on the field, that's for sure.